Today I'm going to go through five quick Procreate tips that you may or may not know and how they can help streamline your process. Tip number one is to use drawing guides. Drawing guides are really helpful for keeping your drawing straight and keeping you on track when you're actually developing a project. Just click the wrench tool, go down to drawing guide and turn on the tab. What you'll see is the screen covered in grids, but don't worry about that. What you need to do next is go back to the wrench and go to edit drawing guide. And from here, we're gonna pick the kind of drawing guide that we want to use. So you can use a 2D grid, you can use an isometric grid, perspective grid, and symmetry. So we'll start off with symmetry. Symmetry means that anything you draw will be symmetrical on either side. So for example, if you're drawing a face, let's go into our layers here. We'll click on the first layer until we get this menu here. In this menu, we want to make sure the drawing assist is clicked and ticked. It is. So we'll go back to our board. Maybe zoom out a little bit. And now if we start drawing, what will happen is we have a reflection on left and right. So that essentially means that we are now symmetrical when we draw. So if you're drawing a face, you know you've got something to work off that will be at least the same on either side. So if you draw an eye, eyebrows, part of a nose, etc., you know that it's going to be pretty symmetrical going forward. So it's a really great way to get started uh, on a project, uh, especially if you're doing a kind of a front-on portrait like this. If I go back in to the edit drawing guide section, I can then pick perspective. And what perspective is good at is for creating vanishing points and giving real depth to your drawings. So for example, I just click on the canvas like this and I can say where I want my perspective to be. Now I've got lines there. I'm going to put them up to the thickness so you can see how the perspective works from the screen here. So if I want the low perspective, I'm going to put it down like this and press done. You can see the lines there that are all around the screen. These won't appear on your final drawing. They're there for your own visual aid as you draw. So just go to your layers. You can see that this layer is assisted. So that means that drawing assist is ticked. If I ever want to turn this off, just click off and it goes away. So we want it on, drawing assist. Let's go back in, I'm gonna select black color. And now what we want to do is start drawing to, to see how this works. So if I get a line like this, let's just say this is gonna be our ground. And what I wanna do next is maybe put in a building you can see the building was in like this but I want to make this a little bit more three-dimensional and follow the assist of the guides so I'm going to start making kind of skyscrapers here and you can see what I did there as I deviate from the grid it won't let me draw in specific areas it's very it's locked into this these grid lines that I've set so if I want to add another building here but I have perspective on it it will actually apply to only that perspective that's acquired. As you can see, I can only go in certain directions and it will follow this line of the grid perfectly. So this is the kind of perspective we're working from. So this area here, all the way out. And you can see you can do really quick drawings, especially great for landscapes and city perspectives, things like that. But what you need to do then is once you've got your basic shapes in and basic um, patterns in and you want a little bit more finer detail and want a little bit more freedom, just go back to your layer and turn off your drawing assist and then you can go back to your, your normal drawing function. So if we just go back in to our edit drawing guide and this time we're going to pick isometric. So we're going to use an isometric grid. So I can change the color of my grid up here for whatever suits my preference. Pick a kind of a blue tone, press done. And you can see then we have this kind of crisscross shapes going on like so. So what these are, are perfectly aligned to this area. So if you're doing anything technical, um, 
such as buildings, houses, etc. You can really get some lovely help and perspective with this grid on. Um, it's all along, based along this system here of lines and you can't, again, deviate outside of this grid as I'm doing here. Once it's on, you're limited to keeping within the structure that's given. Again, turn it off by going and clicking on it, drawing assist off, and you can go back to normal. And the final one then, back into the drawing guides edit pane, we're gonna to go to 2D grid. So 2D grid is a top-down grid-based uh, setup, and it allows you to be accurate as well with what you want to achieve. So you can increase the opacity of the grid lines, increase the thickness if you want, and size, of course. So depending on what you're actually drawing, can really go quite zoomed in there on that. We're gonna keep it around here and we'll press done. Make sure that our layer is drawing assisted. So now it is. And we'll just start drawing here. As you can see, if I'm just randomly drawing over here, it only allows to go on the certain planes that we got assisted. So I can keep within a very rigid, dead straight kind of application and this works for all brushes as well so even brushes that have a little bit of texture to them and things like that they all work the same way and follow this strict grid system tip number two is drag and drop color what's great about this is you can cover a lot of space really quickly and fill in areas that might take you a little bit more time to fill in manually so for example if you click on the pellet up here in the top right you can see we've got your colors. Let's pick some color we want, pick an orange. And what we can do is we can click on this icon here and drag that into the canvas like that. That fills the entire canvas in one go. We can also be a lot more precise. So if I just go to black ink, draw something like this. Let's just draw a face, really rough and change the color to yellow and then drag and drop it in to the first area. Now what happened there? This is a good opportunity to show a mistake that happens sometimes when you don't have the lines filled off. So what it did there is it actually filled everything because there was an empty space on our artwork. If you zoom in, you can see that two points aren't connecting there. So you gotta imagine that your outline has to be fully filled in for this to work. So, done, undo, double tap. She went a bit further there, let me just go back. So what we wanna do then is just make sure that our lines are actually closed off. So we'll go in, zoom in with our double fingers like this, and just close off the lines here. So that means the color can't escape out of the artwork. Same on the eyes. A little bit of a line that needs to be closed there. This one looks okay, and this one looks fine. Now this is obviously a very rough um, example, but it gets the point across. So we'll go to the color again, make sure that we're on the layer of the artwork, go to our color, select whatever color you wanna use, and drag this time into the artwork. And you see it fills it perfectly. It leaves the eyes and the mouth open then to be colored to whatever you wish. So you can change like that. This is great if you want to fill artwork completely in one go but you have to be aware that as you're filling the artwork you're filling into a layer with uh, black lines around it so you might need to uh, make adjustments or it might not be exactly how you want to construct this illustration so sometimes what i like to do is to make a copy of the ink uh, layer and just make sure that that is always available there if i if i make a mistake so if i reverse it back out what we want to do then is just make sure that we duplicate our layer by swiping left, press duplicate, and then we have that layer, we'll just hide it. So if we make any mistakes here, and further on we want to change, we can just go back and make sure that our ink layer above is ready to go. Tip number three is hold, straighten, and smooth. This is one of my favorite uh, parts about Procreate in general because it really makes uh, things a lot easier when you're doing precise uh, items and drawings and it really makes the process smooth and simple. So what this essentially is, is when you are drawing something, let's say we want to draw a box and to do that with our best intention of making a box as neat as possible, 
normally end up with something like that. So some people are really good at it, some people are not obviously, so in my case I'm just doing a quick box and it looks pretty shambolic. So let's go back, we'll just undo, hitting like this. When you're drawing a box this time, we'll go down, but keep the pen on the page and as you get to the last point, hold down. And you can see all of the four sides straight. So what you have is a much more neater box. Now it's not perfect, so that's where you got to, I'm just gonna undo. That's where you gotta think, okay, let's start drawing. Hold, and then you get an individual line. Perfect line, just draw to the top, hold. Line created, draw to the left, hold. Another line created. So this is how you create dead straight lines on the fly by drawing something, holding down, and it actually just starts to strain off everything. In this case, it's made an interesting kind of crack shape. So I'm gonna undo that. The same place for circles. Um, if you draw, try to draw a circle as best as possible, you normally get something like that. It's not perfect around the edges. So what we want to do is, same principle, draw the circle, but when we get to the end, hold, and you get this really crisp ellipse. Keep trying this with different brush strokes. If you try it on different brushes, it applies the same. So I'm going to undo these guys here, get back to a clean screen, and it works like that. Same principle works. So there's a very much smooth circle, so you can create varying shapes like so. This is really handy for any kind of um, geometric exercises you may be doing. Tip number four is excellent because I used to wear a drawing glove. Now I know some people still do, which is absolutely perfect. When drawing to avoid any kind of touches against the canvas uh, by my other fingers here that could sometimes cause our work to just kind of go all over the place and you'd add extra elements to the drawing that you don't need. So for example, it could be drawing away and your other fingers have the ability to make marks on the canvas like so. And I'm just doing that with my finger. But sometimes when you're drawing, you can see that your little finger may make a mark, uh, etc. So in order to get away from this and to change it up, let me just clear, hitting layer, clear, that gets rid, of gets rid of everything off that layer. So in order to change the touch functionality, we wanna to go to the actions or spanner tool here. Here, We wanna to go to gesture controls, and then we wanna go over here to where it says disable touch actions. So what that does is it disables all the other fingers from interacting while I'm drawing and only allows finger touches. For zoom so for example you can see i'm touching away there i'm trying to draw with my finger nothing is coming out only allowed to zoom zoom in zoom out drawing not a problem won't work but i can still use the pen so as i'm using the pen all my other fingers won't come in the way they won't cause an issue um, and it just i just found it really helped and lastly tip number five is color referencing this is really good when you have an image or a photograph that you've brought in and you like the color scheme of and you want to use. So for example, I have brought in this image here, which I went to actions tool, insert the photo and took it from my library. So let's just say I like the color of the hat here and all you have to do and any part of the image you wish is just zoom in, get a better, more accurate reading and use your finger, anyone, hold down on the color and you can see that our color wheel changes to that color. If I hold down and just move across the canvas, like so, you see it zooms in and it takes a color point from wherever you want. So let's just go down here to this brown, click it off. You can see that it's been applied up here in your palette. And that's just really handy to be able to pick straight off the bat and keep going with your work. So you can switch between colors quite easy.